If I can just get everyone's attention. Hi. Hi. Um. Hi there, my name is Katie Kish. I'm the assistant, I need to be louder. I'm the assistant director here at Center for Inquiry Ontario. Um, I just wanted to welcome you all here tonight. And uh, if it's your first time, um, the Center for Inquiry, we've been here for a couple of years. We're the leading organization for secular uh, and non-religious values. And we, um, we do a whole bunch of events like this one. In the coming weeks, we have a big Darwin Week Festival coming up where we're going to do a screening of Inherent the Wind, a book club on um, origin of species and an event with Dr. Larry Moran where he'll be speaking about post-Darwinian science. So for all of those things, there are newsletters here at the side table. Feel free to pick one up. Um, also, while you're here tonight, we have a small store at the side. It's Intelligent Designs. Check them out. They're sporting official merchandise for the Atheist Bus Campaign, which you may or may not have heard about uh, recently. Uh, the Freethought Association of Canada is based uh, out of here as well. They're a charitable organization. If you haven't heard about the cam campaign, they're going to be putting on the side of the bus. There's probably no God. Now stop worrying and enjoy your life. And they've raised 31, just over $31,000, I, I believe, yes. Uh, so if you're interested in donating to that, you will get a charitable receipt if you donate more than $100. Uh, I think Justin? Yeah. Speaking of money, uh, that leads me into my usual pitch for members. So um, Katie mentioned all the great events that are taking place the middle of next month for Darwin Week. It's more like Darwin year, really. 2009 is the big 200th anniversary of the birth of Charles Darwin and the 150th anniversary simultaneously of the publication of uh, his groundbreaking, probably the most uh, important uh, piece of uh, biological writing um, ever. So we're going to celebrate that with lots of events. If you want to get into all of those for free, as well as everything else that we do for the next 12 months, then please uh, consider becoming a member. And that does uh, help us continue to provide you with great programs and services political outreach, campus outreach, all the stuff that we do um, that you've come to rely on us um, to provide a sort of voice for science and reason. Um, if you do want to get more information, you can talk to me or Katie about that. $60 for uh, regular admission or regular membership and 20 for students, um, which is a fairly good deal if you add up all the events that we do over the year. It's about $300 value, so if you come to a small fraction of that, it's worth it for you. Um, okay, I'll leave it at that. Uh, please do help us, though, because we do want to continue moving that rapture wheel forward. We're trying to reach a thousand members by the end of the year. So if you want to be part of that Forging Our Future campaign, uh, you can talk to me. Okay, thanks. All right, so I just want to introduce our speaker for this evening. Dr. Keith Oatley was started as an undergraduate at Cambridge uh, in London, uh, where he was awarded a first in psychology. He then moved on to get a PhD in psychology at University College in London and did a postdoc uh, year in engineering and medicine at Imperial College in London. He came here to U of T in 1990, and he has been a prof of applied cognitive psychology there. He is a former president of the International Society for Research on Emotions, a fellow of the British uh, Psychological Society, and fellow of the Royal Society of Canada. So please help me in welcoming Dr. Keith Whitney. Um, does that work? No? No. 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 Have I, have I, I haven't managed to turn it on. I'll, I'll try again. How's that? Okay, good. Well, thank you very much indeed for inviting me to talk. Um, I'm going to talk about emotions. Uh, I, I understand that my chum, Ronnie D'Souza, was here a couple of weeks ago um, and uh, also talking about emotions. And Here's something that we can start with. Emotions, if we're thinking about human beings and what we're up to, emotions are pretty much the most interesting aspect of psychology that there is. Uh, it's also an aspect that uh, 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 Katie was talking about uh, Darwin. Uh, Darwin's, um, I won't say second most famous book, but maybe it is the second most famous book, uh, which he wrote in. Uh, 
1872 was the expression of emotions in man and the animals. And that's really the founding uh, book of research on emotions. Um, so as Ronnie will have told you, although in ordinary parlance we think of reason and emotions as somewhat separate, um, really they're not. So that's part of what I'll be talking about. So, um, what Katie asked me to do is to talk about emotional intelligence. And so I said, all right, well, I'll talk about emotional intelligence, and I'll also talk about the intelligence of emotions. So that's what I'll do. So where did these ideas come from? Well, intelligence is a very old term in English. It goes back to Middle English, uh, so, and it's in writing from at least 500 years ago. Uh, Shakespeare used it. Um, to mean something more like communication, but it also at that time meant understanding. Um, the word emotion is much newer, so it only, it only really appeared in English about 200 years ago. In fact, when people started to think scientifically and biologically about human beings. Uh, the previous word, largely used in, in theology, was passion. So what is an emotion? Well, I'm going to, this is now the kind of definition, it's not really a definition, a description of what emotions are in the way that researchers on emotions now think about it. Uh, an emotion is usually uh, conceived as something that derives from an evaluation of event, of some event, uh, as it affects something important to us. Um, so, for instance, fear is a reaction to danger. Um, it includes a readiness for certain kinds of action, and it tends to exclude other things. So, for instance, when you're in love, you focus on this particular thing, and you don't mind what those people over there think. Uh, it gives a sense of urgency, um, and... When you're having a really good emotion, when you're feeling, for instance, angry with someone, then thoughts come to mind that are difficult to stop. Um, when an emotion is extended in time, we call it a mood. Uh, the theory that I'm associated with uh, has moods and emotions as, as having the same underlying process. An emotion is when something changes, and a mood is when... Uh, when that thing is sustained. So fear, for instance, is an emotion when something happens. Anxiety is the mood of extended fear. Um, most interestingly, emotions mediate our relationships. Um, I mentioned love, uh, an emotion of, uh, of commitment to each other. Anger is an emotion of conflict. And here's an example. Now, stop me as I'm going along if there's anything I say which is, uh, seems either outrageous or unclear. Yes? <laughs> Sorry? <laughs> Could I speak up? Is that what you're saying? Or you have a question? I can't hear you. Oh, really? I'm terribly sorry. Can someone um, make, the, uh, make this machine um, <laughs> louder? I'll, I'll sh sh if I speak louder like that, is that better? That's is that okay? All right. So here's um, a book that I've written um, that came out about four years ago. And if you want a really good introduction to uh, the psychology of, motion, of emotions, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> um. I'll just pass it round so that you can flip through it. And I'd quite like it if it would come back to the, uh, <laughs> to the uh, front here. Um, I also happen to be the uh, first author on the standard textbook of the psychology of emotions. And that's it here. That's what undergraduates have to read. Um, now, the origin of the idea of emotional intelligence is that uh, two people, uh, Peter Salovey and Jack Mayer, who I know, were both painting a room in, in, uh, in Peter's house in 